Jesus. You see, you got to continue to sow seed yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. in order to reproduce. You see, anything that doesn't reproduce becomes extinct. It'll eventually die and go away. If it doesn't reproduce or if it doesn't reproduce fast enough, it becomes what? Extinct. So we don't want our relationship. We don't want the things around us to become extinct. No, we're going to continue to reproduce. We're going to re reproduce after our kind. We're going to reproduce that word. We're going to pray according to the word of God. We're going to speak according to the word of God. Because life and death is in the power of the tongue. It says, they that love it will live by it. They that love the life, they that love the death, that's what you're going to live by. God wants me to live by life. He said, I've set before you. He said, I want you to choose life. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. And um, I was in Austin. I believe the Spirit of God was saying that um, he showed me a picture of what we, what we call time-lapse photography. You know what that is? That's when you, you know, let's say you plant a seed and you take pictures at different stages and you play that in about two to five seconds. Well, what you do, you see the seed coming up and just pew, manifesting right before your eyes. What took five seconds on the video might have taken months but you are allowed to see it in seconds. The Spirit of God is saying that there'll be times when it seems like things happen just instantly. But you have incubated it in prayer. You've incubated it in the Spirit. And because you trusted me, when you finish, when you open your eyes up, bam, it was manifested. And I believe the Spirit of God is, gonna sh is, is, is showing us that if we trust him, if we incubate our vision, the inc incubate our dreams and prayers in the Spirit, praying, we'll look around and bam, it'll be there. It'll, be, it'll appear like a time-lapse photography. <laughs> Seems like we just planted the seed seconds ago and all of a sudden it shows up. God wants to be that El Shaddai in my life. I've got to get out the way and allow him to. Allow him to do that. Allow him to be that. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Everybody say, I'm going to watch my seed. I'm going to watch my seed. That way you're going, to, you're going to watch what you plant. Watch what you sow. Turn to Genesis chapter 1. Help me hard. Get this out. In the process, I'm going to say this. When God looks at us, he sees a seed. He sees a seed that's going to reproduce after our kind. In other words, he designed us to reproduce new creatures in Christ. Just like Adam was a seed. Adam was a seed. Otherwise, he'd have, he'd have just created a whole bunch of people. But he created one man and one woman. He said, Reproduce, multiply, and replenish. He used them as a what? Seed. We don't realize the power of a seed until the Spirit of God begins to show us. And we're going to see in Genesis chapter 1 how Adam became a seed just like we are seeds. I'm, 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 I'm studying here right now. I believe the Spirit of God wants to say some things another way. Just, just let me go with this. Thank you, Lord. You see, when I say when God looks at you, he sees the what? A seed? It's just like, and, and we can't understand that, but it's just like if a sculpture look at a big block of wood or a big stone, he sees a bird in that stone or some other object. I can't see it because I'm not what? A sculpture. But the sculpture sees that image and what he does, he just starts chiseling away at what that's supposed to be there. And when he finished chiseling it away, the stuff that's not supposed to be there, what comes forth is what? His image that he's seen. And so that's what we're going to have to learn to do. We're going to have to chisel away at some stuff that shouldn't be there because God is looking at us one way and all we see is a block of wood. So what I need to do, and I say each of us need to begin to chisel away at the stuff that shouldn't be there. 
And before long, whoo, that beautiful butterfly, beautiful bird, what God saw in the first place. <laughs> and if we begin to allow him first to get to purify us, perfect us, we perfect ourselves by getting rid of those things that we know we shouldn't, shouldn't be around. Behold, we are coming forth as pure gold. Now, this is going to require mindset change. We're going to have to quit thinking the way we've been thinking. We're going to have to quit acting the way we've been acting. If we want to see the power of God and the anointing of the Holy Ghost, like God desires us to, We've got to back away from, from maybe from what we've been thought uh, God is. Maybe back away from some of the things that, uh, that's hindering us. You see, they make a Rolls Royce. Hmm. <laughs> There's a Rolls Royce, a Mercedes Benz, and a Fiat. They all transportation vehicles aren't they they'll all get you where you need to go you pay for the labor that goes into creating the Rolls Royce the Mercedes Benz and the Fiat but they're all transportation why is it then that you know some people would rather a Rolls Royce than a Fiat I can't complain, I can't criticize anybody because of what they desire. All, I'm, all that matters is transportation. Everybody say transportation. Getting to my point. Getting to what I need, where I need. Now, if I'm a fiat person, I, Rose Royce, that, that doesn't even enter in my mind. And I'm just using fiat. I don't know if I'm just using that as an example. I'm not saying fiat is an inferior car by no means. I'm just saying it's, 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 it's the, the more work, more handcrafted work goes into the Rolls Royce. But as a fiat person, why would you want a Rolls Royce? That's a waste of money. But if you begin, if you quit criticizing and let the Rolls Royce person walk it, uh, ride in his Rolls Royce, y'all will meet up at the same place at the same time. <laughs> why is it that I'm so concerned about what you drive? Why am I so concerned about what you wear? Why is it am I so concerned about you? Because just because I'm not there, that don't mean you, I'm, so leave me alone. And see, that's why I say we're going to have to learn. We're going to have to learn that because we're too busy meddling in other people's business. We're meddling in ministries, meddling with the children, meddling with everybody else instead of praying for them. We need to see things differently. I need to change my mindset. And sometimes this is going to be a mother folk, maybe hard. Because we want to do what God said. But now I got to change what I've been taught, change my, 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 my values. I've got to change everything. And what you're going to change, you're going to change it to line up with this word. Uh, years ago, I guess for Prophet's 50th birthday. I had it in my heart that I wanted to, she wanted to go to Chicago, she had been wanting to go to Chicago, so I had it in my heart, I'm going to pay for her to go to Chicago on a shopping spree. And in my heart, I, I, wanted, I wanted to do this right, I was going to send on a shopping spree, and then when she got back, I was going to have a great meal cooked for her, and I couldn't cook, but I knew a lot of chefs. And so I had this chef telling me everything I need to do, how to prepare, telling me the, the simplest thing I need to do to prepare. And so I had it all set up. And so I told the prophet, I said, I'm going to let you go to uh, Chicago on a shopping spree. I didn't tell her about the cooking because I, I wanted to enjoy the trip. <laughs> and then I made this statement. I said, this is your 50th birthday. I'm going to sit in your first class. I want you to fly first class on the airplane. Now she never fl flown first class before. She just you saw the money signs. And for a couple of days, uh, you know, she would ask me, so how much is that? And so I would tell her. And I could see that there was something down on the inside that wasn't selling right with her. But this is something I wanted to do. Everybody said you wanted to do it. This is something I wanted to do because I wanted to bless her for her birthday. 
And all of a sudden, you know, uh, she said, I don't want to I don't want to ride first class. She said, I'd rather spend the money on some shopping. <laughs> and I'm thinking, I'm going to give you some money to spend on shopping. I want you to ride first class. I want you to experience the first class plane ride. She had never ridden first class before. And so I had, I, had, uh, I had ridden first class once. I was in the military and I had my uniform on and the captain came by going on the plane. I was riding. You probably don't know what they call standby. That means you get a seat if it's one available. So I was sitting there in my uniform and the captain came by. He said, son, come on. Took me off the bench and put me in first class. Ooh, you're talking about something. You're talking about flying. They waiting on me like a king. Well, I wanted my wife to experience that. But it doesn't matter how much you want somebody to experience something. You can't make them experience it. You can't wish it on them. I got, it got to the point where it was a chore. It was like, here she is. I'm trying to say, this is, this is the best for you. You need to go experience this. And the more I tried to convince her, the worse it got. Until I had to, you know, I had to just, I had to just sell it in my mind. Okay, I, I'm not going to ride the first class. Because I was trying to get, push her into something I wanted for her. She didn't want it. Are you trying to push somebody something that, they, that you want for them? And you haven't prayed it through for them to get it for themselves? I had so much peace though when I released the fact that she didn't want to ride first class. Now I was still able to do what I need to do to make her birthday what it needed to be. When you start getting peace with people, when you start allowing them to be themselves, then all of a sudden now, it releases you. You don't have to worry about trying to make them be what you think they ought to be. You want to make them pray a certain minute, so many hours a day? You want to make them read the word so many hours a day? You want to make, let God make them. Let God do this thing. I tell you, when God does it, it's going to be well done. Now, this is no excuse for you being lazy and not reading the Bible not doing anything. No. When you're crying out to God, he shows up. You see, we come into services and we come on Wednesdays and we come on Sundays and we say, Lord, we need a move of God. We need a move of the Holy Ghost. Well, he's trying to get me to, he's trying to push me into a place with him. Not where you think I ought to be. He's trying to push me in a place with him. And once I get there, I say, oh, Lord, I'm so sorry. I should have been here a long time ago. This is so good. You are such a good God. You are such a merciful God. Oh, your presence, your presence. And as I begin to uh, sow seeds of, of love, like I said earlier, like the word came forth earlier, he is God. He always will be God. Now I recognize that he's God in my behalf. Now I can ride what I want to ride in, drive what I want to drive, what I want to drive, not what you want me to drive. I may not be right. I may not be up there at the uh, Rose Wash yet, yet. Everybody say yet. Ah, see, Kabota. You know, you sit here looking at me, but you, you're not going to... You're not going to ever get a desire to ride in the Rose Wars until you sit in one. You may not ever get a desire. And, and, and here you are, you're thinking about, well, the money. I, that's another house. If God's going to get it for you, <laughs> you, you, you can't afford the fiat. So what you, what you fussing about? Oh, geez, I didn't mean. Fiat are good cars. They're real good cars. I need to figure out, Lord, I, tr I need to just trust you. I need to trust you. I miss that. And what we end up doing, if we don't know it, is we playing God. <laughs> God says, turn it over to me. And you won't turn it over. And you still hold on to it. He tell you to trust him and you won't trust him because you're still worried about what that person's not doing. And of course you know you are better than God, right? You know you can do it. 
even if God can't. He needs your help, and he, he got to have you to help him. So without you, oh, and if I can ever learn, I'm talking to myself, y'all. If I could ever learn, God, this is your problem. They are your people. I prayed, and that's all I can do. I'm releasing them to you. And once I do it, Lord, it's up to you after that. And he'll begin to show up. He'll begin to manifest. And you'll begin to see what God did and not you. You'll begin to see, oh Lord, you have done a great thing and I really appreciate you. I thank you, Lord God, for saving my loved one. I thank you right now, Lord God, for healing my body. I thank you right now for answering my prayer. Oh Lord Jesus, I give you the praise and I give you the glory. Turn to Isaiah 53. I know you, uh, I know you told you Genesis, but we're not going to read that. Turn to Isaiah 53. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. Uh, that's 55, Isaiah 55. Isaiah chapter 55. She cut out Isaiah 55. I'm going to pick it up in verse 10. <clears throat> Talking about God's word. Now, the seed, what? Is the word of God. If you don't plant the seed, it's not going to produce a harvest. You have to plant the seed. Now, how do you plant the word of God? Somebody, you have to open your mouth and you have to let it come out of your mouth. You have to speak it. You have to open your mouth. And, we, and then, then what else? Um, you can't speak it based on what you feel like. You can't speak it based on, well, that, that can't be. That's not going to happen because I'm looking at them and, and uh, they're still cursing people out. I can't say... They, they, they love God. I can't say they're saved and filled with the Holy Ghost. Well, you're trying to speak based on what you see instead of based on what the Word says. Now, I know you've heard this before, but I'm trying to get a mindset change. When you leave here, I want everybody to be want, wanting to ride first class, forgetting about what it costs, forget about what you're going to do when you get there. I want you to experience God's best. And I believe you're going to want to experience God's best. Now, just for the record, you know, I've only ridden first class once, so don't think I'm trying to get you to ride first class. I'm trying to get you to see there's something else out there. There's something better than where I am right now. I don't care if I own the airplane. There's something better for me. Isaiah 55, verse 10. For as the rain come down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but what water the earth and make it bring forth and bud that it may what give seed to the sower so the rain comes down just so you can have seed as a sower and you can have bread as an eater verse 11 so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void but it shall accomplish that which I please and it shall prosper in the thing whereunto I sent it. It shall, go, not, it shall not return unto me void. It means it shall not return without fruit. If you want fruit in your life, speak that word. Let the word of God come forth out of your mouth. Let it come out. And it won't come back void. It'll come back with energy. It'll come back with power. The reason we are not seeing this energy and power, people, is because we are not speaking it. Uh, I mean, say enough. We're not speaking it enough. God wants to demonstrate himself in my life. And the more I, I yield to him, the more I see that. I say, Lord, help me. Help me to yield more to you. Help me to hear your voice. Help me to submit. And once I begin to cry out to him, oh, we'll begin to see the power of God and the anointing of the Holy Ghost. God's a good God. And he wants to do great and mighty things in my life. In Mark chapter 4, Jesus is talking about giving this parable about the sower sowing the word. He said, uh, as he sowed, some fell on by the wayside. Some fell on 
stony ground. Some fell among thorns. Some fell on good ground. He said, this is the difference. Those that fell on the wayside, as soon as they were sown, as soon as they fell, the fowls of the air came and ate them up. So those fall up on stone because they had no root. They, they didn't have much earth to come up. You know, if you plant a seed not too deep, it's going to come up real quick. But it's not going to last. When adversity comes, when, when, when something comes against that seed, against that plant, because it has no root, what's going to happen? It's going to die. The one that came up among thorns now, uh, 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 you know, a tomato plant is designed to produce what? Tomatoes. The one that come up among thorns, the Bible said it came up, but it didn't produce fruit. It was a beautiful plant, but no fruit. That's no good. If I plant a tomato plant, I want what? Tomatoes. And a lot of times what happens is when we hang around people that's thorns, we're not going to produce fruit. Oh, we can, we can shout and we can sing and we can do all this stuff, but the fruit is what's going to matter. See, what happened is they're pretty leaves, that's the shouting. They're pretty leaves on a, on a tomato plant. But if I come out to a tomato plant, I want what? Tomatoes. And what you have to realize is every seed will produce after its kind. Now, huh? I uh, had uh, years ago. I probably I know I've shared this. I had uh, we were on bluegrass, and I had the pre I had the I took pride in my yard, and so I kept my hair just trimmed and kept my grass mowed. I just it was first class. Well, we went away for summer vacation, and we came back. All my hedges were dead, and knowing me, I you know I was saved, but I wasn't all that spiritual. I was, wasn't producing no fruit. Yes, I was. I, this was just fleshing, fleshing the moment for myself. I came home and I said, my neighbors were jealous and they just unpoisoned all my hedges. <laughs> now, I thought that. And I'm, I'm, I'm wondering right now, which one of y'all? And I'm looking at their yard and I'm trying to figure out which one of them looked the best because you're the one that poisoned mine. And I mean, I, I, it bothered me. And so uh, the, 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 that weekend, I think the barrel was helped me. Some, somebody came out there and helped me. And I was going to say, well, I'm thinking it's going to take me all day just to get these things up. Because they were about, oh, I don't know, this high. I mean, trees almost. I said, man, it's going to take me all day to get them up. So I got the shovel, and I hit a few strokes, and I pulled. The whole plant came up about this deep in the ground. Now, it stayed pretty and green because I kept watering it. But as soon as I left the heat, left it alone, for a week, it, it died. Now, here I am blaming my neighbors for something that plant did. I'm blaming my neighbors for dead plants when I, they died because there was no root. Is that something we blame blaming other people for in our lives? I'm not going to look at nobody. Look back this way. You're not producing the way you should be producing. You're not doing the things you should be doing. And you're not seeing the fruit you should be seeing. You're coming to church every Sunday, every Wednesday. You come to prayer every Tuesday. You come all the rehearsals. But no fruit. And you want to blame me for pardoning your plan. Your plan. Look here. It's not my fault. I mean, if I don't if I don't teach you with knowledge and understanding, yes, it is my fault. But you can't blame me because you are dead. Uh, can't blame prophetess. Can't blame nobody but who? You. I know y'all that not, you're, you're thinking oh, this is rough. But I want you to know that you, we, we're going to have to grow. We got to get up and run with the, run with the pigskin, run with the ball, do something. If I'm a seed, if I'm the seed of Abraham, 
And God's word is a seed and it will not return void. I've got to take the seed that he's put inside of me and produce a harvest, a harvest of souls. A harvest of manifestation, of fruit. You got the, the fruit of the spirit. The, you got the love, the peace, the joy, and all these things. Here I am, this tree, this beautiful tree hanging out here with all the fruit on it. My fruit of uh, love is right up on here, about this big. All the other ones just blooming. Well, I've got to do something about this fruit of love. That fruit should be producing just like all the other ones. I'm gentle, I'm patient, I'm kind. But did you know love work on all those? Love hinges on all those. You know, I'm through. I'm not going to. I just want you to, I just want us to realize that playtime is over. And if I'm serious about this thing, if I'm serious about God, I hit my knees, especially, you know, we're in a season of consecration, a three-day consecration right now. In the middle of it, hit my knees and say, Lord Jesus, help me. I want to produce a, a fruit. I want to produce after me. I want to produce a spiritual being to the kingdom of God. Help me. Give me the words to speak. Show me how to snatch your soul from hell. Give me the desire and the compassion to snatch your soul from hell. I was talking to someone a few days ago and they, they, they were just sharing how the thing that would happen in their lives and I could sense the compassion flowing out of them. They had compassion for people. Compassion for situations. Jesus had compassion. And I said, Lord, I, I, I need that compassion. Give me that compassion. Where I can, be, when people, when I begin to, when I move with compassion and I begin to lay hands on people, I want to see them healed, delivered, and set free. You need to use me, Father. It's not about me. It's not about myself. It's not about what I've done and, and all the accolades. It's about you using me to set somebody free. If you're available, then let's prepare to plant those seeds. Let's prepare to begin to sow. Because your harvest will not come without sowing. What do I sow again, Pastor? The word. You open your mouth and you begin to speak that word. You begin to declare the word. And you're saying, Lord Jesus, help me. See, you know where you're missing it at. You know where you're lacking it. You, might, you, you fooled me good. You've done good by fooling me. You've done good by fooling your neighbor. But you're still not satisfied. Because you have a hunger for God. You have a thirst for God. Quit trying to fool people and start trying to please them. Please God and he'll show up for you. God is a supernatural God. He always will be God. He just needs me to know it. He needs me to realize that he's God. He wants to do so much more for me. Stand up on your feet. He wants to do so much more for me and so much more in my life. And I'm hindering him by my mentality thinking. I'm limiting him because of what he wants to do in my life. I'm limiting him because of what I've been used to. People of God. <laughs> you know, you don't have to feel a lightning bolt to just fall, fall on your face before God and say, Jesus, God, I need you. The Holy Ghost don't have to knock you down to make you do that. That's just reverence to God. Could be just reverence to God. Ah, uh, help us, Lord God, bring the reverence to you because we know when we do that, you'll show up. I, I, I just want you, Father. Every eye closed right now. And just say, God, I want you. I need you. I want to get out of your way. Help me to see the way you see. Help, help me to let go of myself. Help me to embrace you, Holy Spirit. Help me to embrace what you have for me. 
Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus, I thank you, Father. It's not about nobody else, not about who's sitting beside me. This is just between me and you right now. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus for showing up, showing up in my life. I will be better tomorrow. I will be better in a few minutes, and I will be better. You'll begin to see fruit in my life because I'm going to cry out to you. Father, I thank you for the anointing. The anointing that you've trusted me with to bring forth fruit, to bring forth light believers, to be a light on this earth. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you are showing yourself, mighty. you're showing me how to yield to you. Now, I thank you right now, Lord God, for change. Change in my life where people will be able to see Oh, they'll be able to say, God has done great things for them. God has done great things for them. That's because of the fruit. That's because of the fruit. The fruit that's in our lives. Oh, Lord Jesus, I thank you for the fruit. Lord, I thank you for the fruit. I thank you for the fruit. I thank you for the fruit, Lord. Lord Jesus, we're ever so careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. <laughs> in the name of Jesus. <clears throat> In the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. Every eye closed. I just want you right now, if you need to, just, just, just talk to God. If you haven't already. <clears throat> and if you're in here and you're not born again, or if you're not filled with the Holy Ghost, or if you're in a backslidden condition, now is the time. I wouldn't, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't do anything else unless I get that straight. If you're watching by live stream, the anointing that's here is in your place, in your living room, in your car, wherever you are. Tell God you won't change. And mean it. Tell him if he put his finger on it, you'll get it out of your life. You're going to quit coming up among these thorns because they, all they're doing is just stopping your fruit. No more thorn bushes. Oh, you you, you want to be good sower because you want to produce 30, 60, and 100. The seed that has been in, deposited in you was deposited by God and it was designed to produce a harvest. And if you're not producing fruit, you're not of God. It's, it's, that's not God's will. That's not God's best for you. God has so much more for us. So if you're in the house or if you're watching by live stream, you're crying out to God. If you're not saved or born again or filled with the Holy Ghost, there's no way you can do what we've talked about without being saved and having Jesus the Lord of your life. Feel being filled with the Holy Ghost where you pray in the Spirit, where you allow your spirit man to pray and bombard heaven. God has great things for us. And I've determined that I'm going to live a holy life for him. I've determined that I'm going to allow him to use me whatever way he sees fit. I'm backing up. I'm forgetting about pride, forgetting about what it looks like to anybody else. I just won't care about what it looks like to God. Now, Father, I thank you for the anointing right now. I thank you for your presence. If you're in this house and you need prayer, I just want to also pray for those, I, you know, that's watching by live stream. Father, in the name of Jesus, they can't get here, but you can get there. You are the healer and the deliverer. Let them know by the Spirit of God that you are there right there with them. You are a prayer answering God, so we send your word and deliver healing, peace, anointing. Whatever is needed, Lord God, we thank you for showing up right now. In the name of Jesus, right where they are. Thank you for showing up right here, Lord. I thank you, Father, for the power of the Holy Ghost. Lord God, we're ever so careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. We thank you, Lord God. We see the way you see. We thank you for the anointing. We thank you for showing up. Now, Lord, I thank you right now. Let your word be so real to us, Lord God. Let us walk in an anointing, Lord God. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Father. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. If you're in the house tonight here and you want prayer, just come and we're going to lay hands on you. The power of God is here. 
the delivering God is here. God want to do some things that we can't even imagine. I haven't seen and you haven't heard the thing that God has prepared for me and for you. For those that love him. Thank you Lord Jesus. Thank you Lord Jesus. Now there's this came to me. Somebody, you, you've been praying, but it's like you've been praying ritualistic. You've been praying like you, you, this is what you've been praying every week or every day or whatever. He said, ask God to help you not pray as a ritual anymore. It may be you know, for someone's salvation, let's say. Ask him, say, God, I don't want to pray as a ritual anymore. I, I want to pray with determination. You just ask him. So I want to pray and I want to get results. First you say, Lord, I have, been, I have been just uttering words. I have been just praying as a ritual. But no more. I need your help. I need you to show me how not to be praying as a ritual just so I can tell people I've been praying for them. I want to pray with power and I won't have to tell them. They'll know it. No more ritualistic prayers. Prayers that get results. That's what we're praying. And we're going to see the power of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for showing us. And Father, I repent right now for any real ritualistic prayers. I thank you, Lord God. I'm praying that prayer that gets results. I thank you for the power. And Lord God, as we come together as one, as we make one sound unto you, as we pray in unity, we fully expect the manifestation of the Spirit of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you for what you've done tonight. Thank you for what you've done individually, for me and for everyone else in here, Lord. I thank you for taking us to another level, expanding our mentality, expanding the way we see you, causing us, Lord God, to ride on the high places in the realm of the Spirit. Now, Lord, I thank you right now, Lord God. You've equipped me, anointed me, and appointed me for such a time as this, and I will be uh, an example. I will be an instrument in your hand. I will declare the glory. People will come into the kingdom for such a time as this. Lord, we thank you and give you all the praise, all the glory in Jesus' mighty name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you.